Hi guys, my name's Subtruder, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back to uh, the month in review for September. Now there are three things I want to talk about today, one of them that's kind of more multifaceted but straightforward, and the other two are um, much more kind of up in the air uh, to one degree or another. Now, um, the first one I want to touch on is, is what happened in Las Vegas last week. Um, and and then we'll we'll roll on through. But the, for those of you that don't know who who haven't seen the various news coming out of Las Vegas, uh, there was the the worst mass shooting in history where a a, a gunman um, took up a position in a a hotel overlooking a music festival and opened fired on uh, the crowd below, leaving. Uh, 58 people dead and about 500 people wounded by either gunshots or by injuries received by the ensuing stampede as people attempted to escape the line of fire. Um, now, as, as you know, this it's at the time of recording, this is only a, a couple of days past. Um, at the time of you guys seeing this, it'll be the following week. So there might have been more information released by the time that this video actually goes out compared to um, the, the amount that I actually have right now. Um, but ultimately, um, the, the situation was that, that it caused a, a huge amount of panic, a huge amount of problems, and uh, apparently the, the um, gunman, after realising that he had been uh, discovered, turned his attention away from the crowd outside and opened fire on the security guards and, and other individuals who were outside his hotel room attempting to find out where the, the gunshots were coming from. Um, in which case then there was a, a wait for police to arrive uh, to actually apprehend the individual, but by that point they found that he had uh, killed himself, seemingly. Um, and uh, as a result, the, the, there was a, a clarification when the first piece of information that was put out on the body count was that uh, it was 59 people that died. Um, there was a clarification later that that was 58 people from the, the crowd that were fired upon plus the, the shooter himself. Um, and then moving on from that, there was um, information released about the number of weapons that were found. Um, apparently this this individual had a huge stockpile of weapons with nearly 50 weapons uh, over three different locations including his hotel hotel room and the two homes that he had uh, in the local area um, they, they found that the he had a huge amount of, of ammunition as well as other bits and pieces kicking around uh, all of which were legally procured um, which leads on to some other, uh, points of discussion that we'll get on to in a minute. But the, the, the first responses were, of course, the uh, people have been going out to support, people have been going to, to try and do what they can, be it either uh, giving blood in the States or providing money or whatever else. Um, you know, there, there has been a, a significant outpouring of um, help and, and support for those individuals, especially when the United States at the moment is going through like natural disasters and entire cities becoming lakes almost uh, due to tropical storms and things. And then you have stuff like this happening as well. You know, they're not having the greatest of time times over the last couple of months um, in regards to people's lives being irreparably changed. Uh, and usually for the worse. Um, and so as a result though, moving into the discussions that have come out of this, because as said at the moment there's not a huge amount of information there that's um, kind of apparent, that's, that's, that's usable. Um, and so as a result I kind of want to go off into the discussions that have come out of this so far. Now there's one that I agree with and then there are an awful lot that seem to come out much, much faster that um, really really make me kind of question well, who these people are and where they're, they're coming from to, to have their minds instantly jump to that stuff. 
Um, so the one that I agree with first, let's start off on a positive note and then go downhill, um, is the the surely considering the fifty firearms plus um, the the other shooting paraphernalia and the amount of of uh, ammunition that were that, that was found. Um, surely this should raise questions in regards to gun control again in the states, which, again, if you actually look at, at the, the US Constitution in regards to its, its allowances on firearms, it makes it you know, fairly clear that it has to be part of a, a, a militia, that it needs to be there as part of a, a kind of collective uh, peacekeeping force, that kind of thing. You know, just in the in the very straightforward wording that's there, um, and also it comes from a time where firearms and weapons generally were firstly potentially more required, but also tended to be far less efficient. They weren't as advanced in in terms of their capacity to kill, and so as a result, this the the piece of legislation there that that people continually go back to. It, it doesn't really have that much of a leg to stand on, considering it's hugely outdated. Um, you know, for a country with possibly the more li the most limited history on on the planet to one extent or another, um, it, it's it, you know America is very very good at clinging to the things that are as, as almost as old as the country is itself as a whole. Um, and that's that's the problem, you know. There 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 needs to be some level of advancement here, you know, especially considering that this is the worst possible uh, scenario that has come out of this, where this this huge um, attack that has harmed so many people um, it all revolves around the fact that this person was able to get hold of the the weapons and equipment required. To, to cause this amount of, of injury. Um, and, and so that is a, always going to be a, a conversation that's worth having, you know, a, a, a set of ideas that are worth working around. Unfortunately, the, um, the way that, it, that that kind of point has been received has been, oh, in a lot of cases, oh, well, there's nothing we can do about it. That's bollocks. There's, there's, it's your country. You can change things, you know. All those people who are going, you're not taking my guns away. Well, fine, but the, you know, the more selfish you are about just wanting to keep hold of your own toys, leads to other psychopaths like this guy being able to go and kill many, many people. For, for many, many innocent people that have done nothing wrong, you know. But then the other arguments that have come out of it that have all been, um, to one extent or another, charged with forms of identity politics, or arguments over the fact that this individual is often being referred to a lone gunman. Well, as far as they're aware at the moment, in terms of the lone gunman part, that is a means by which to distinguish him and his form of domestic terrorism, which lots of people go, ah, oh, it hasn't been called, yes, it has been. If you go through the news stories, if you listen to the entire segments, it is being referred to as that to one extent or another, but referring him to, to him as a lone gunman, as that is what is apparently the case. This is one lone individual with only a cause unto himself who has gone out and caused untold harm. Whilst in many other instances, we have, you know, when it when it comes to uh, terrorism, be it domestic or otherwise, it comes down to people with agendas. There is no agenda here that has so far, at least at point of recording, been um, kind of discovered and, and worked through, in which case his the, de the definition of lone gunman is purely a way to distinguish him from people like ISIS who tried to take responsibility for this in which case, you know, what would you prefer? Would you prefer to give more power to ISIS by letting them take credit for things that have nothing to do with them? Or would you prefer to actually get to the truth and the bottom of things? In which case, allowing the distinction just to occur in reporting so that people can understand what's going on, you know, wait until the investigation is over before you start bitching and complaining about the terms used. Because at the moment, the terms are being used 
for simplicity's sake and for the, the capacity to allow people to understand what has happened. Once the investigations are concluded, once we find out more, that's when proper terms can be used, that's when proper blame can be attributed and and if there are any other people that were involved in this, then they could hopefully be held accountable as well. In which case though, then the last part is is the the kind of ridiculousness when people have bought in identity politics. You know, oh well if this was a Muslim person the laws would change like that. Well no it wouldn't because that's it we've already seen that in the States over the last year or so and it still didn't change anything. Oh well we should ban white men from doing stuff because this guy was a white man. Yeah, but that that again how many white people are in America? You're a majority white country. You've got 320 something million people living on in in that place. You aren't going to be able to ban all of them from doing anything that is otherwise legal. Why 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 is the solution removing rights only from one group just because this group you know that you can attack this group because it supports your narrative? What what's the how does that help anyone? And these are all things that are coming out and being thrown out on social media or in in the me in media in general before the bodies are even cold you know what why can't it be a case of thinking i saw it and i i i saw it the the um the the day that it happened kind of the the kind of news flash this is happening in in la right now and like my response to that initially, my my kind of gut feeling was, oh god, not again. You know, because it, this is only going to cause more division. It's going to cause more arguments. It's going to hurt people. Why? Why? The 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 lack of empathy from those individuals who didn't see that and go, oh my god, this is terrible. The people who instantly went, ha, I was a white man. And we need to do this, or how oh, is this, or that, or the other. So we need to start causing more arguments and more divisions. What kind of psychopath are you? Like, like, the the world is lacking in empathy as it stands at the moment. But if your first response to seeing one person turn an entire crowd of people into victims where either they're, they're going to be suffering from the trauma of being in that situation completely unexpectedly, they're going to be potentially injured in ways that may affect them for the rest of their life, or they've lost loved ones right there in front of them being just gunned down and removed from their life in an instant. How on, how can you, you be okay with yourself just going straight from that to Oh well, it doesn't matter because of this. Oh, this needs to push my political message. There, are, there's a time for that. Like I'm, I'm talking about this at the time of, of recording. A few days afterwards, at the time that you guys see it, over, over about a week afterwards. You know, I'm talking about this, this now, and even then, I'm feeling like I want to see more of, of the investigation. I don't want to start causing divisions. I want to discuss it as part of a, a, a kind of an event that has happened which has been terrible but even from the worst situations there are things that we can learn from it. Because otherwise all of those people that were gunned down, you know, it, it doesn't stop it from happening to other people in the future if we don't learn from it. It doesn't um, honour the memories of the of the 58 people who were, who were taken away from their loved ones um, if there is nothing learned and and so on and so forth it doesn't help the the 500 odd people that were injured um, and and so the the surely the the first point to me to be gone to, straight towards should be empathy should be caring should be looking out for your fellow man which has been a big response in a lot of places with with people setting up GoFundMe's and things. But at the same time, the people, that vocal minority, who 
always have to find a way to to push their agenda, to push their narrative, to complain, to to attack and attack and attack, even whilst they're complaining that they're the ones being attacked. You know, there's already been enough attacking going on in this situation. Stop it. But anyway, I'm I want to see what comes out of this because. I'm, as, a, as I'm sure many others are, knowing why this happened is a big and important thing. Was it something bigger than just this one man, or was this one man just acting on him, on him, his own volition for whatever reason? Was it this one crazy person, or was this something bigger? That, I think, is the biggest question first. And then the next question is, how can this this kind of thing be prevented in the future, which comes to gun control? And whether the whether the um, American politicians like it, whether the the individuals who are um, big gun fans like it, whether the the various corporations involved in arms manufacture like it or not, it's the discussion that needs to be had, and it's the discussion that has to have action taken, kind of as a result of it. But anyway, that's the end of of that story. That's all I want to say on that. Obviously, the the um, we are likely to hear more of of kind of that rolling out um, over the next few days. So uh, you know, we'll, and and probably by the time you see this video, there will be more information out, or at the very least, there'll be um, kind of the, the the authorities investigating will be further along, and we'll see what happens. But the next thing I want to talk about, and the actual reason why this video is coming out today instead of last week at the actual beginning of the month, was because I wanted to cover what's happening in Catalonia at the moment. Um, because for those of you, again, that don't know, um, the Catalonian government have basically been, over the last month or so, and for a while to be fair, um, have been looking for a way to kind of move away from Spain. Yeah, almost the same way that um, certain other areas of certain other countries, I know Scotland, for instance, in the UK, um, have been looking to kind of make a departure from the, the main country or body that they have been uh, a part of up until recently. And with, with the, the biggest difference, though, is that the Catalonian kind of region of, of Spain, um, their um, attempts to uh, generate a referendum to see whether or not they should sue for independence and, and all that kind of thing has been... Um, it's never been recognised legally. They don't actually have any real mandate for it um, by... The, the Spanish constitution or the, the various laws that, that impact this entire situation. And as a result, the, the Spanish government have ensured that there's no, um, that, you know, that, that there's no validity to this. Uh, the EU, where lots of people have been kind of looking to the EU to help this situation because they seem to think, as many of the individuals involved in Brexit did, um, and in the whole Brexit leave movement did uh, that the EU has so much more power than it actually does when it doesn't it's a body that's basically built on various agreements between sovereign states it doesn't remove sovereignty they can't interject here the only thing that they've been able to confirm is that they can't recognise the the verdict of any referendum um, due to the legal situation in Spain that involves Catalonia uh, and so as a result, if Catalonia did become an independent country or an independent um, state, then it would, as they seem to want to, then they would ultimately run into the problem of all of their various issues that, that so far they've been able to rely on Spain or rely on the EU to kind of tackle with them or on their behalf, they will now be completely removed from. And so as a result, Potentially, even whilst they're a very rich area of Spain, relatively speaking, they will still struggle, kind of struggle coming out the other side of it if they actually kind of manage to push for actual independence and 
form themselves out as a, as a state unto themselves. But that's the legal side of things. Now, what's actually been happening on the ground was that once it once they set a date for the referendum in Catalonia, the biggest kind of response was one from the Spanish government, where they sent they, they were arresting. Um, officials. They were arresting the individuals who were organising it, and then when it actually came up to the referendum date, which was the 1st of October, the, um, the, the Spanish National Police got sent in, and since then they've been called an occupying force. Um, you know, it's... it's and where, where initially the Spanish government, when there was polling done, were coming just under 50%, um, if they had been more reasonable in their response to this, I feel like maybe they would have, you know, if a referendum had been held and all the rest of it, just with discussion and then moving forward to it, they actually had a good chance of, of like, tipping that scale and winning that. But of course, when you send in an aggressive force to silence, to suppress, to oppress, then, you know, you're not in kind of endearing people to you. And so, as a result, with the the uh, with what um, amount of the vote was actually managed to be counted and all the rest of it, ninety percent of those voters made a point of going, "We want out." Now, the issue there, though, is that again, most of those people who were saying who, who wanted to stay in Spain didn't even bother to go out and vote because they had already been told by the Spanish government that it couldn't be legally recognised. It wasn't a legally recognised referendum, it wasn't legally supported in any way, and so as a result they could ignore it. And then it got worse, because you had, throughout the rest of the day, as, they, as, as you had the, um, the Spanish National Police coming in and, and kind of breaking up, uh, or trying to break up, Kind of marches and uh, closed down polling stations, uh, confiscating the vote, uh, the ballot boxes and votes. Um, you ended up having the national police attacking um, the the protesters, attacking the people who were out to vote. Um, you had the um, the Catalonian police um, pref attempting to to create kind of human walls around protesters and same with the Catalonian fire brigade creating these human barriers between the um, the national police uh, in their riot gear and and with batons and shields and the 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 public and yet there's even footage showing the um, the the national police still attacking those those firefighters and those those police officers who were trying to keep the peace and maintain that barrier between um, the the public in their area and the police that have been driven in and due to the size of the the unrest and the the unlawful nature of the the separatist movement considering that the referendum and other things aren't supported by either spanish constitutional law or by other forms of international law at, the, at this time they have uh, had kind of a, a reason to um, put even more of the the national police uh, into the catalonian region to um, well s control the situation or at least attempt to. Now, here's where the problems are going to continue, because you've got now, after that, you had thousands of demonstrators marching through um, the, the uh, through Barcelona, and especially outside the uh, headquarters for S Spain's National Police Force, um, kind of kicking around. And again, I'm recording this the week that this has happened, and so, as a result, by the time that this video comes out, possibly during the weekend and so on, there might be more information about this, considering that the um, the individuals who uh, held the referendum and, and so on and so forth are, at this time, as far as I'm aware, still um, kind of not putting out information in regards to how they intend to proceed. Um, I don't believe that the, the, the Catalonian regional government has actually had its session to properly go through this and so as a result 
it's um it's an interesting situation but the one thing that has come out of it that looks possibly somewhat positive is that the Catalonian leaders have called for mediation with Spain over independence. Now, do I think Spain will budge on this? No, I don't think they will. I don't think they want to lose Catalonia as a region. Um, and I don't feel like they're going to back down on that simply because you've got a... They are, legally speaking, in the right as far as... Um, their control of the region goes and so on and so forth. The biggest problem that I feel that they're in the wrong on is the way that they have dealt with it. But again, Spain at the moment has a, a as far as I'm aware, conservative government. They are, are um, right-wing individuals and as a result, judging from some of the other right-wing governments that we see in the world, it wouldn't surprise me that they're in, their, their response doesn't surprise me because they're kind of probably come into this with a very traditionalist um, authoritarian view and so their kind of means by which to uh, to respond to a threat to that is with force which is what they've done and especially considering that they are legally supported in doing so it's of no real surprise to me that that's what's happened the biggest thing though is we'll have to see where the mediation goes if it's actually taken up. I wouldn't be surprised if Spain just went, no, we're not doing it because we don't need to. But then in a world which is, is continually being divided and divided and divided between one group and another group, like the 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 facts here are very messy and especially because they're coming out of a, a place that apparently they, they just don't want to talk in various ways. Actually having the uh, the information um, really doesn't kind of help the situation because each piece of information that comes out is pretty much incomplete. You know, we know that um, that um, the, the Catalonian region makes up somewhere in the region of about a fifth of Spain's overall GDP, but then we don't know if that's enough for Catalonia as a region unto itself to support itself after that without support from other, other bodies and other countries. Which is probably where the Catalonian leaders are now kind of looking for mediation to see what they can do. The The thought that comes into my head would have been if that they if there had been more discussion around this by the, the Spanish government and then an acceptance of a, of a referendum, but in a very limited capacity, and in a more limited capacity that's actually spelled out, instead of what happened with with Brexit, where it was a case of this referendum was was kind of continually thrown out there, and people continually felt that it was legally binding when actually in writing it wasn't. And so this needs to be far more. They, you know, if they had done that and they had been far more transparent with it then that would have been far more um, straightforward and then maybe they would have actually won the vote if they had engaged with those people instead of brushing them away. You know, if you are if you want this region to remain, then you surely want to engage with the people there so that they're on your side instead of just trying to sweep them away under the rug and forget them and ignore them. You know, it's, it's a, a big mess when you have leaders that are just ignoring their people without good grounds for it you know and this this the the grounds for this seems to be well we don't need to engage with them and it's our region so lump it which again just doesn't add up particularly well but again maybe having some element of devolved powers would make sense or something like that but again that doesn't seem likely considering the stances that the two sides of this have taken now um but again, we'll have to see, maybe by the time this video comes out, there'll be more information out there, we'll see more. Here's hoping it doesn't go so far as to become um, a, a case of Spain kind of taking full advantage of its capacity to control its own territory and literally setting things up that could really terribly impact the people in Catalonia, including things like curfew and having more pol more police, um, more Cath uh, more national police there, Catalonian police being disbanded, things like that. You know, we'd, let's hope that it doesn't come to that kind of thing.
that um, you know that that's possibly the worst case scenario that I see coming out of this, depending on how things go. But anyway, let's let's move on to the last thing I want to talk about in in this month in review, and that is again Brexit. And I know that I talk about this almost every month, but that's because things are are rolling along and. Every single month, I feel more justified in seeing, uh, in the way that I voted, the, the way that I voted to remain, um, purely because I'm seeing more and more of what was said to come true coming true. Yeah, um, and and yet yeah, you've still got um, people ranting and raving about wanting to leave. And yet now I'm even seeing Brexiteers who were like at the, the top of the whole Leave campaign turning around and going, why are we even doing this? This doesn't make any sense. Part of this isn't even what we voted for. What the hell's going wrong? Um, why did we trust these people at all to to do this on our behalf? And part of me is like, well, you made your bed, now lie in it, but... Unfortunately, I've got no other choice but to lie in it with you. So let's go through this. We've got we've had various things that have um, have come out over the last uh, little bit, but um, yeah, it's it's interesting. So we've got things about May coming out, and she was looking to give the EU more money as like a token to to uh, get her way, um, and yet she's. You know, she's still got also other money to, to pay as part of a divorce bill. So all of that money that we were apparently looking to save overall is still not forthcoming, considering that also we got an awful lot of return from the money that we put in to the EU. Um, but she's, she's continually clawing and trying to get hold of things, trying to look for, for kind of ways around people and just to get her way. And when I hear her speak about this, it's still very all her centric in the way that she's discussing it. And that's one of the things that has always bugged me about Theresa May and the people that she was running against when she was looking to take over from from Cameron. All of them were me centric and all of them were just completely out there in regards to, to their level of understanding, their level of capacity and capability and so on and so forth. And it's it's ridiculous but there she's she's trying to put forward this transitional period to kind of slow brexit down so that maybe maybe something will eventually start working but then we've got other pieces of news coming out one of one of them that stand that, that stood out to me a lot because i know i've known a couple of people that have worked for this company was when astrazeneca which is a a swedish uk um kind of joint company a pharma, big pharmaceuticals company who have um, their headquarters in Cambridge and who have about 7,000 employees uh, spread out across kind of seven sites for everything from research and development to manufacturing to the marketing and sales stuff and whatever else. You know, they've got those sites across the, the UK and they, they make all manner of different drugs for all manner of different things. But when they announce now that they're you know, due to Brexit, due to the, the pressure that's been put on them and so on and so forth, they're now looking to completely move out of the UK, um, which then, in my mind, is, is again, in, in some areas of uh, economics, trickle-down just doesn't work. You know, general trickle-down economics doesn't work. But in this particular instance, you've got 7,000... Excuse me, you've got 7,000 employees working for them across numerous sectors. Only uh, it says about uh, their website suggests that only about 2,000 of those um, are specifically for biopharmaceutical research and development, um, specifically in and around Cambridge. And so, as a result, though, you've still got about 5,000 people who are working in other areas, most notably things like manufacturing and supply and sales and marketing. And so as a result, though, if it, that's that's 5,000 jobs that are just going to go because they're not going to be able to move. They're not um, necessarily um, important enough to remain in the company and be carried on. A good number of those 2,000 skilled workforce biopharmaceutical research and development guys and girls 
are probably also not going to have their jobs continued as they are probably just general lab techs and st members of staff working on projects under people who are actually important who will continue their careers with this company. Um, the thing though that then stands out is um, unfortunately though here is where we see these jobs disappearing actually having that trickle down effect because these these jobs are also then because it's a, a product that's being supplied out you have more in the way of jobs being created by the supply that's being created here you know you, you're having people either having to to sell these drugs on for as a, as a third party or um, engage in the transport and the the uh, other parts of, of the infrastructure around this for getting it from place to place. So you might have AstraZeneca's uh, guys transporting it to a warehouse for moss chemists or boots or something like that, but then you're going to have those then redistributed from there. So that's, again, more jobs that are looking for, for that area of, of things. And real, I realise that these aren't the only suppliers, but when you've also got... Um, the the um, the Lancet study that's warning about how Brexit poses a substantial threat to every part of the NHS, from staffing levels to funding to drug safety to transplants and other things like that, all being at risk. Um, you know, a, a drugs manufacturer that that is supplying these the the NHS in this country to one extent or another, and who is also um, generating jobs as a result of it being here you know we're seeing this this cascade of various problems being caused by this one thing you know we've we've got the the world health organization that last year pointed out that our nhs and the way that it's being run and the way that it's being managed and the amount of money that's going in and out of it um and who owns different parts of it is no no, no longer really a true a national health service considering how much of it is controlled uh, by private interests or which have been taken over by private interests that have then shrugged off those responsibilities later on when they found that they didn't have the capacity and so as a result we've got this this big kind of drain on um these these areas that we kind of need from the public sector uh, and from the private sector, we need them to for for the health of the country as much as anything else in these particular instances. But then also, moving on from that into the more general economy, we've got a couple of different things that have stood out. One of which is the 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 U.S. who are going to be kind of so so helpful to us. Apparently, you know, we're going to do so much more trade with them. Um, yeah, no, they've they've imposed these huge trade levies of like i think it's let me find out 219 percent trade levy from um manuf uh, from aircraft manufacturers that are based in northern ireland yeah one of an, an area that's that's um quite substantial in terms of the the amount of profit it can potentially bring in is manufacturing and yet we don't have an awful lot in this country because we don't have an awful lot of raw material we are a very very small country and we don't have a lot of raw material one of our biggest exports is and, and things is is uh, financial services and even that started to decay as a result of brexit um you know and so as a result you you take a look at uh, all of the things that were um that was said previously about who we were going to trade with, about our special relationships, and some some people put so much stock in all of that. They believed it for no reason whatsoever. And so as a result, though, now we're actually seeing the bite of it, where the people we're, we're trading with, you know, they don't give two shits about us. And they're not going to. You know, Trump's speech to the UN, which I'll cover in my Month in Trump video tomorrow, it made it pretty clear what his thoughts and opinions are uh, in regards to kind of who he's looking out for. And yet then also you've had uh, Liam Fox making a point of talking about, um, what was it, the, Philippi uh, the Philippines, Panama, uh, South Africa, and somewhere else, which I think collectively comes to about 3% of our our total trade in, in the UK, whilst I believe... The trade that we have with the EU at the moment through the single market stands at something like 46 to 
So we're willing to sacrifice half of our total trade in favour of these other countries that we want to do more with, but already only can only do a very, very tiny amount. How are we going to develop that when also some of these countries are not particularly capable or, or able to increase the amount of trade they're doing as they are not necessarily the most wealthy countries? It doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me. Um, a lot of this stuff that's been said and going on. And so the Bombardier stuff around um, these um, these uh, the, the planes that are being um, manufactured and then you've got all these levies being put on them, you know, it's, it's no surprise to me, but, you know, you've got 4,000 workers there who are having their, their livelihoods and the potential kind of risks of their job being both hugely impacted and kind of ignored by a lot of people and as much as you've had kind of Theresa May going oh she's very disappointed about this well I don't give a shit if you're disappointed about this this is your fault you know th this and and your your predecessor um, it's it's entirely the mandate that you developed for yourself and that you have run with you've got no one to blame other than than you because you couldn't be responsible and actually lead instead of just um, bending over backwards to try and get more votes next time. You know, it's it's poorly thought out to say the least. And then the last part on the economy that I kind of want to talk about is that um, whilst the, um, the 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 pound itself has has had a slight rise again for the first time since um the actual brexit vote uh, you know a substantial climb um we've still we're still seeing further brain drain we're still seeing the loss of experts the loss of people and companies who want to sit in this country and work with us work for us and yet we're seeing an awful lot of things break down, even our own manufacturing due to the weakness of the pound at the moment, even with this tiny surge, this weakness of the pound has ultimately caused us no end of problems, you know, and so as a result, we, we're kind of going to continue to run into these problems where our manufacturing, what little of it that we have, is um, ultimately going to um, have no real benefit to us because they can't gain the materials that they need to continue to manufacture and then that's going to cause them to shut down that's going to cause things to to break down over time those people are going to lose their jobs and then unemployment is going to spike again like it did a few years back and like we have continued to struggle with since then you know we we have had overall a, a slight decline in um, unemployment over time for the last year or so but at the same time we're also seeing fewer and fewer jobs that were overall more based around things coming into the country or leaving the country uh, disappear as well so it's only going to be a matter of time before the supply of working people and the the number of jobs available starts to level out again and then we're going to see more of a spike afterwards and then also we've we've seen all manner of, of other problems, especially in terms of education, where universities have been complaining that they can't train people anymore because entire departments are basically being told that they've got no legal right to remain in the country. And again, these are these are people that have been potentially working here for substantial periods of time. They are people that have been contributing to society. Um, they have made their lives here and worked for us. And even in many of the cases with with science and and engineering kind of areas they have done great work on behalf of us generally and yet these people are being told that they've got no legal right to remain here and they have to jump through all the same hoops and do all of these other things which again are is, is only going to suggest maybe that they should leave that they're not wanted here anymore that it's created this hostile environment within the country and uh, as a result you know that brain drain that that disappearing element means that you're going to you've not only devalued your your country's infrastructure your country's economy your your the diversity and things within your population 
and I'm not talking purely in terms of of um, oh the diversity of people who are from this place or this place or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I mean in terms of the the people willing to do different jobs. Yeah, the people who are willing and able to do different jobs. If everybody who is leaving in one way or another is a nurse from the NHS or an expert from a university or the the head of a company that was brought here to do well and he's taking his company with him, you know, all of these different areas, then quite frankly, the you are left with either the very, very rich who don't care what's happening because they're going to be fine anyway. Or the the working people who are kind of sat in the middle because there's no longer people that are that are there as specialists in universities because a, a large number of them are international. And then you've got a whole load of these other specialists and people who are working in jobs that don't want to, you know, that British people don't necessarily want have also gone. So then who's going to do those jobs? You know, the, the, the uh, abattoir... Um, and kind of food manufacturing industry have a huge they they came out and said that they have a huge issue with just how many people that they have um, who are from kind of eastern europe and and so on who are working in slaughterhouses doing these crappy jobs that no one else necessarily wants to do and yet now if they're all being removed if they all have to go if if uh, they choose to go because this place, you know, the UK just isn't friendly to them anymore, then that entire industry starts to kind of crumble, crack and fall to its knees. You know, and that's that's food supply for a lot of people. Excuse me. But this is where um, Paul Krugman, I think I said that right, who is a Nobel laureate uh, economist, came out and summed it up all very, very nicely when he said that Brexit has no chance, zero chance, in fact, of leaving the EU um, will make Britons better off. And he um, kind of very pointedly made the point of, of going, well, we, we've <laughs> all of these invisible benefits of, of being part of the EU that may lack friction to the common person they have a significant impact on trade patterns, which is where um, Paul Krugman uh, did most of his work in in um, the the kind of uh, predicting of trading patterns and things like that. This the, he was one of the individuals who stood out throughout this in in various different areas as being one of the individuals who was sat there going, "Well, actually, no. This is this is how it's." going to work because this is where I did my work and it's all planned out like this this is how the patterns work and you changing the patterns this way will make it worse generally um, and so as a result he's he's going you know that the, before we, there was some cost to us but we were getting an awful lot back in return you know we weren't having our sovereignty infringed upon we weren't having other things done there was still a line there was still political control there was still other bits and pieces and the free trade overall allowed us to uh, to do very well off it you know we grew very very quickly now we haven't even left yet and we've already seen this this collapse this breakdown and um, you know it's it's kind of a, a substantial problem especially with the value of, of pound sterling which historically has been a very strong currency um, has started to decline and even if we've had that little upturn over the last month or so a couple of months um, it's still much weaker than it was and it's going to probably continue to get weaker the worse off we we are through uh, the various um, kind of exit process um, and so he, he sums it up quite nicely at, at the end of what he said by going well, a weaker pound is pretty much what you would expect and is appropriate um, if you're going to do this thing then you want a weaker pound uh, as as it's it's going to be there and is the only possible thing that could present opportunities but also considering where our our overall kind of um, economy sits at the moment we we can't take advantage of those those potentials and even then it's a long shot and as he sums it up quite nicely there is ultimately zero chance that leaving the EU will give us an, a general overall benefit. 
Now, as far as I'm aware, um, you've, you've had people in the EU who haven't removed from the table us just calling this whole thing off, going sorry and not fucking around anymore. Um, but uh, we've, we've also seen um, that um, the, the EU, not EU, the French Prime Minister Macron um, was putting forward uh, some ideas for a profound transformation of the EU to make it um, much more of a, a block pulling together around things that are important, including things like offence, uh, offence, defence, asylum, taxes, uh, as well as um, the formation of uh, institutions that are across um, numerous EU countries, including things like research facilities and, and universities, um, as well as doing um, much, much more to kind of pull um, countries together in uh, solid conversation and to work better together. And he even made a point of saying that even the UK could, you know, find a place in the block as part of co different countries moving at different speeds. So if we wanted to move much, much faster on um, issues that we see as being important, maybe that would be more acceptable in the way that this would work. But obviously we're not going to be able to take part in this process and in the development of these ideas because we, we want to remove ourselves. This is what I was saying all along. It's, it's, go it's so much more important for to stay, take part in the conversation, to engage with it, to work with it and within it so that we actually have some kind of control over what happens next. I've said this to people who are in, in the YouTube uh, comments here have said, when I've been doing videos about YouTube and the way that they've caused problems and the way that it's, it's diminishing what we're doing, I've gone, well, I'm not leaving. I might have to change my patterns of working. I might have to do other things around it. I might want to do more with stuff if I can, but the thing that stands out is that I'm not going anywhere because I want to be involved in this process. I can see the potential for this platform and I can, and it has proven it in the past, it can prove it again, but at the moment we're in a tough area but just because certain leaders are being spineless. And I want to be part of this conversation, I want to be part of the process, I want to be part of the the uh, working to move forward and do well and that's where I feel we should be with the EU as well but unfortunately that isn't the way that either our leaders who are being spineless and our, our the, the tiny extra percentage of, of the public that actually went out and voted last year um, really kind of wanted to go with this so we'll see you know but having a, a leader come out and say stuff like that did kind of make me go well maybe there is still hope somewhere maybe we will see a a move in the right direction so that we can actually just get on with people move forward continue to advance and shrug off some of this um really crappy stuff that's been going on around our security around the messes in in terms of the economy and in terms of other political areas you know, let, let's let's actually sit down, have a chat, see where we can go with this, come to new new arrangements, new agreements if needs be, and then actually just follow through on them and do well. You know, we're we're all stuck on this tiny rock. Let's let's make the most of it. Yeah. But anyway, this has turned into a much longer video than I thought it would, um, and so as a result, guys, I uh, I'd love to hear your comments on anything that I've I've discussed here. Please just leave them down uh, in in the comment section there and uh, you know as, as I've said before I try to reply to everything and if I don't necessarily reply to it in the comments itself I, I will try to respond to it in a video uh, especially if it's something interesting so you know please leave your thoughts down there and uh, otherwise thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the video tomorrow take care Thank you very much for watching guys, if you found this at all interesting then please drop us a like, share this video and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the video tomorrow, take care.